on today's show. What should we watch for in game one of the NBA Finals, Heat versus uh, Nuggets? And then Monty Williams just got hired by the Detroit Pistons. We'll talk about that and more on today's Locked On NBA. Let's go. You are Locked On NBA, your daily NBA podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And welcome. You are locked on to the NBA. My name is Nick Engstead, host of the Locked On Mavericks podcast. Thanks for being part of the show, making Locked On NBA your first listen every day. Be an everyday or subscribe or follow for free. Just search Locked On NBA wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. But the best way you can help us grow is to listen every day and to comment anything below. Let us know in the comment section what's one thing you're watching for in game one of Heat versus Nuggets in the NBA Finals. We'll talk about that. We'll break that down a little bit. We'll talk about Monty Williams. Literally right before we were about to record, Monty Williams got <laughs> hired by the Pistons. It was rumored earlier today, but we'll talk about it and what we think about that. And then, of course, we'll play Count It Up, where Josh Hart is has some questionable beverage takes. Charles Barkley's losing things in the shower. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, are we just, is this another one? NBA NBA refs are uh, are in their feelings online. Duncan Robinson in a group chat. All kind of, an all time counted up later today. So we'll get into that. But let's start here. We're gonna do three things to watch in Game One of Heat versus Nuggets uh, in the NBA Finals. We're excited about it. Go listen to Locked On Heat, Locked On Nuggets. I listened to both of them today. They're excellent, incredible hosts. Both. Uh, all four of the hosts, actually, on Heat Nuggets host Locked On NBA shows throughout the week. So you'll be hearing from them all the time. But go check out those shows. Uh, but let's start here. To me, the first thing that I'm going to look for is I'm interested to see, a lot of people are going to talk about this, but I think it's a real conversation, Pat, is rest versus rust. I think that that's a real thing because you look at these two teams, Denver's coming off of nine days rest. Miami's coming off of two days rest, but they're also traveling. They're going from, they were on the road in game seven in Boston. Now they're going to Denver. It's just going to be a factor, especially in game one. Well, I think it, it didn't matter really where you're flying from, right? I mean, how far is the flight from Denver from Boston versus Miami? Uh, it's still a pretty long flight. E- either way that you're... Hold on. You're, let, me, you're let, me, let me pull my, my like, geography yeah. out as well as my, like, <laughs> map. Get that atlas out. Can you yeah. get that atlas out for me? Um, that, I mean, basically, it, it would have been a long flight. They would have had to travel that way. Anyway, I guess if it's game six, right, you get a little bit more rest in, built into there. But I think realistically, when when you're looking at the rest versus rust thing, the one thing that even medically has been proven is that a body that is used to the running, used to the motion, used to, right, it hasn't been sitting around waiting for this game to come. Not to say that the Nuggets haven't been doing anything, but they haven't been playing at full game speed. Though you usually see those guys acclimate a little bit quicker to the game, you usually see those athletes acclimate a little bit quicker to the game, no matter the sport. Um and the one thing that I think stands out is this is a Miami team that has been the scrappy, fight it out, find a way to win it. And Has if they more can than do tank. that in game one in the beginning because they're already hitting the ground running coming into Denver. It could be a much more interesting game where, yeah, right, like that first game, there might be a little bit of rust. The shooting might be a little bit different. Well, I'll, I'll talk about the shooting splits that we've seen from uh, Denver, but they haven't missed a lot with their big name guys from the three point line. That's where you'll see it affect the most. Uh, Matt Moore shared this stat on Lockdown Nuggets in uh, Finals Game One. A team on at, with uh, the team with more rest. If they're uh, if they're at home, they're eight and two. If they're on the road, they're one and ten. They're they're uh, one and ten <laughs> on the road. So, like. Yeah. The, the Nuggets are just so favored because of this rest matchup that, like, game one statistically, historically has gone to this team, especially considering uh, the other stat that he shared was teams that win uh, game seven are 36 and 50 in their next series. So there's a lot of stats, as, as lots of stats have gone against yeah. the Heat this whole playoffs. There's more stats going against the Heat in this one. Um, one thing specifically I'm looking at in rest versus rust is – uh, Jimmy Butler, is he hurt, right? He, he It seemed like the last couple of games he was hobbled. There was a little bit that he was holding back from. And will fatigue set in early for him because of the travel, because of, you know, less days off that, you know, the Nuggets have just been hanging out for like a week and a half, <laughs> a week and a half in Denver. And uh, will fatigue set in early because of Jimmy Butler's injury, but then also because of, of this as well. I'm really looking at that. And then the last thing on this point is, is Jokic just so fresh? You know, there's gonna be there's probably talk about 
about, oh, you got to wear down Jokic. You got to wear him down, which I don't think they could do. I don't think the Heat could do anyway. Maybe if any no. team could do it, it could be this Heat team. But you got to wear down Jokic. You got to attack him. You got to put him in actions. You got to do, do this stuff to wear him down. Uh, is he just so fresh that that's not going to matter? That that's not even going to be a viable strategy in this series because of how much time they've had left? Those are the two things I'm looking at player-wise when I'm talking about rest. Yeah, I mean, when you look at Jokic, I mean, listen, the, the scariest part about Jokic, and I think the part that nobody talks about, everybody talks about the passing ability. Everybody talks about the shooting ability. Everybody talks about the court vision. Nobody talks about the fact that the dude that's doing it is 290 pounds. <laughs> is that an, are, we, are we accurate with the numbers here? Well, that's what Carl Anthony Towns said recently. I I, I guess I didn't okay. fact check it. That, that might have been season before. But, basketball uh, reference says 284. So you're, Okay, my you're, bad. You're, I was off by six pounds. <laughs> he's heavy. You know what I mean? He's heavy. Like, he's not a – like, this is, this is like – this is like uh it was that Miami Heat Shack was got down to 290 again, didn't he? Like when Pat Riley was like, You gotta get back in shape. <laughs> that's a big person. So yeah. that's that's tough to wear down. I guess the other thing, uh, the if if we want to go into the next thing, the yeah. thing that I'm looking at the most is um that heat zone versus the Boston Celtics was a masterpiece. When I say I went and rewatched game seven and I rewatched game five today because I was just I really wanted to see how well it worked and how well they were switching, attacking, closing out, all those things. First off, nobody on Boston can go left. That's the one thing that I took away <laughs> from that. There's probably a four-minute clip of guys messing up going left. That might ruin the Celtics. That's a whole that's neither here nor there. But will that work versus a Denver team who is shooting the ball very hot? I mean, You've got four players on this team shooting the three ball above 40%, taking five or more threes a game. Murray's 44%. Jokic is 42. MPJ is 45. KCP, surprisingly enough, shocked me a little bit there. 42%. Like, this is a dangerous Nuggets team shooting the ball. Yeah. That zone kind of forced Boston to shoot it, which is where they struggled. Yeah, I looked at this too, and I was listening to Ryan Rosillo's podcast. He had Jeff Van Gundy on, who just broke down the zone in a way that really opened my mind. I didn't even really think about Miami's zone too much uh, before this. And when I was listening to Jeff Van Gundy, the way that they set it up, where they have uh, just different ways that they can run it, they, they they're, it's very specific in how they set it up. And Jokic is just so built to break it all down, like to break down his zone. Yeah. When you look at... Uh, during the regular season, Miami ran zone 21% of the time, super high, incre incredible amount of time for an NBA team. And according to Synergy, they were excellent. They only allowed 0.94 points per possession, which is really low. They didn't allow a lot of points scored against that zone. In the playoffs, they've gone down to about 15%. It was a lot more against the Celtics. Yeah. Uh, so it was a lot more than that, but they're still excellent. 0.89 points per uh, possession on that one so super low if you look at Denver though on the other side of things Denver against the zone in the regular season it was run against Denver 30 percent of the time according to yeah. synergy because what are you going to do against Jokic all right we got to run zone against him because we can't just go one-on-one -on -one or double him because he destroys double teams he passes out of all of it so we'll try a zone on him we got to try something different we're getting destroyed let's try something different let's make an adjustment uh but they were excellent against that zone in the regular season 1.15 points per possession that's that's very good on offense and then in the playoffs they've gone against it 20 percent of the time and they're excellent against it scoring 1.4 points per possession like they yeah. they have been destroying zones yeah. in the in in the uh the playoffs and now they're playing a team that plays it better than any of the teams they faced before so this this heat zone versus the nuggets offense is something to watch because how much can miami run it and how much will like and how will how will they adjust off of it and uh, yeah, we'll will Denver just destroy it with Jokic's passing, the shooting of the the you know the shooting of the Nuggets is I don't know if is it better than the Celtics. I think that it's probably more effective just because of the length. The thing about the Celtics and the one playmaker up a little you got bit. the yeah. fulcrum. <laughs> yeah, you know the one guy who makes it all happen. Right. I think the and the biggest thing that uh, you you brought it out right. The biggest thing about that zone versus the Celtics that just didn't work. The, the Celtics couldn't get to the middle. They had no no ability to get were, to the middle of that zone. They were doing the Al Horford break the zone thing that they teach you in like elementary school, right? Where they're like, yeah. all right, get somebody in the middle, break the zone, and then pass out. And he was passing out. They just couldn't hit any of those shots. They were just shooting so bad from three. And Jokic is going to – he's going to have so many more options than Al Horford did out of that. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think the biggest thing uh, with going up against Jokic is at least right out – when you look at Al Horford – 
Bam out of bio can push with Al Horford a little bit, right? I can bring guys that Jimmy Butler's got enough weight and strength to push with Al Horford a little bit. Again, I go back to the previous point, 284 <laughs> pounds. He's big. <laughs> it's uh, gonna be tough for him. It's the last tough. thing I'm watching for is do they start Caleb Martin? It's an easy thing. Again, this is brought. This is this is actually the first yeah. thing. It's an easy thing to 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 see, right? We're gonna know by, by like before the game. By, probably yeah. by the time you listen to this, you may know if they just decide to start Caleb Martin or do they go with Kevin Love that that has started playoff games throughout this run. And uh, do Kevin Love and Cody Zeller play? Because they weren't really playing that much by the end of the series. So I'm looking at Miami's rotation with the first question. Do they just go ahead and start Caleb Martin, who was their like second, third best player uh, through most of that that you know Eastern Conference final series? And then what do they do with Kevin Love and Zeller? How how ineffective do you think Bam would be if he's if his focus is slow down Jokic? Because I think even with Al Horford, right? We saw Bam try and lock in defensively and he was he was really good defensively in the last couple of games yeah. maybe grab a rebound out there but he was really <laughs> good defensively in the last couple of games but his offensive game fell off of a cliff i think you have to have bam out of bio scoring offensively in this series for the heat to have a chance do you bring in kevin love maybe to be I, it's crazy to say, but is he your starting five? Do you go bam at the four possibly just to have somebody who's out there with a big enough body to go up against uh, uh, um, Nikola Jokic? Because if you're just going to put bam on Jokic, that negates what he's really good at is the help stuff that coming. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> it, yeah. the, that point really landed. Um, what, what happened? What? Oh, it, I guess it was maybe it was just on my end. It was a did it, was it a, glitch? Did a little glitch on it? It was a big boom sound. I guess it was on it was, it was on a website. Uh, it's scary, like it made me nervous. All right, uh, coming up, let's get into uh, Monty Williams getting hired by the. It was like a big boom, like somebody dropped an anvil, <laughs> like threw, in the, it threw the whole point down. That's the best. It was like so loud in my headphones. I thought it was a, a, a sound on accident that you. That you oh I thought I hit that. It wasn't me, my boy. Oh my gosh. I was like. <laughs> All right, coming up. Let's get into Monty Williams getting hired by the Pistons to talk about that. Coming up. But before we do, let me tell you about FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook has you covered. They're the official sportsbook partner of Locked On, and they have a no sweat burst bet up to $2,500. $2,500 that you can get back in bonus bets for a no sweat first bet. Just go to fanduel.com slash locked on. Right now, they have Miami plus nine in game one. So, all those things we were just talking about, things to watch for, uh, FanDuel doesn't think they can do any of those things because they're a nine point underdog. Uh, for the series, for the series, it was minus 500 for the, the Nuggets yesterday. Today, it's minus 460. So, so money has gone back to the, the heat, it seems like. Uh, but that's still a pretty big gap right there, minus 460 for the for the series. So there's a bunch of other stuff on there. First basket, let's just do first basket. Jokic, plus 390. Jimmy, plus 500. Uh, Jamal Murray, plus 600. Bam Adebayo, plus 650. Caleb Martin, plus 900. KCP, plus 1,000. That's a, that's a random one. Uh, no MPJ on that list? I mean, it's pr- is there more? Yeah, uh, MPJ plus 1,000. I'd bet MPJ plus 1,000. I think I would go with... <laughs> I love, I'm not going to lie. I love 2023 so that he can get away with that. (laughs) (laughs) Go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us on Locked on NBA, making us your first listen, being part of the show. We appreciate you. We have a five day a week podcast on your, on your favorite team. On the what? (laughs) Hold on. You okay? You all right? We have it on your... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so go check it out go check out the link in the description below and you can find it i host the mavs show pat and hayes host the bulls show we have all the shows covered all right let's talk about monty williams according to sham sharania monty williams and the detroit pistons have agreed in principle six year 72 million dollar deal for monty williams to become the franchise's new head coach and i just saw this as we were talking vincent goodwill reports the deal could get to over a hundred million dollars with incentives Woo. $100 million for Monty Williams. Good move, bad move for the Pistons. Um, g- Great move. You got to go all in. Uh, you feel like you've got a good young core. I think most of us feel like they have a good young core. Got I a do. little derailed with injury last season. And um, I-, I think that you believe that if you believe that Monty Williams is the coach that's going to be able to develop these young guys, which he kind of, I mean, realistically, every stop he's been at, he's shown that he can develop the young guys and kind of get them to buy in and believe in and and 
you know, get them to that next level. I mean, I don't know if every if anybody really credits Devin Booker's leap um, from uh, a really good player to a winning player to Monty Williams. I think a lot of people credit it to Chris Paul, but even just to be able to relay that message together, uh, I, I think you got to give him credit on that. I think this is a good move by the Pistons. It, as a Bulls fan, um, it I'm not going to say I'm scared, but I think that there are a lot of things that Monty Williams brings to the table that might be able to unlock this Pistons team. And I know when, when I was looking at the roster, uh, the, the one name that I thought about him actually being able to unlock that kind of terrifies me might not be the name that most people are looking at. Uh, James Wiseman plays here. He was a top oh. pick in the draft. If you can unlock James Wiseman, with the rest of this team, with Cade Cunningham, with uh, uh, Bojan already I mean, being there, as a, that's actually a scary team. Bojan, you just pull, you pulled that name out. <laughs> Bojan. Hey, Bojan, be, Bo, no, Bo, Bojan. Bojan. Bo, give, me, give me that Bojan. No, Bojan. Bojan Bogdanovich. <laughs> My audience on YouTube is like 40% international. I have to get these names right. It's Bojan. Okay, Bojan. Bojan. Um, Bojan. We, you, you think he, you think also, he can unlock it's also a gyro he's gonna, <laughs> he's, he's gonna unlock james wiseman after he did such a great job unlocking uh ayton i think that james wiseman will probably have more of a hey i was kind of on the best team in the world and they dumped me off in detroit um i just want to make sure that i'm staying in the league kind of mentality versus deandre ayton who to me feels like he's like i should be the number one on this team and so i'm gonna pout about it <laughs> It is very, this is very different approaches on this. And I do, I do think this is a great move for the Pistons. I think that this is a coach that you bring in when something is, when you have a team like this, right? When did he get brought in to the Suns, right? It was like, they were still young. They had uh, some questions on the roster. It's not like they, they didn't have Chris Paul yet. His first year was Devin Booker, Kelly Oubre, Aiton in like his first or second year, Ricky Rubio yeah. bridges, still young, 23 on that team. Like there's the Aaron remember Aaron Baines, Aaron Baines in the building. <laughs> that was the team he took over for. And he created a culture. And if you need a, a coach that can create a culture like this, Monty Williams was the guy. I, I wasn't sold on Monty Williams going to any of these, these places like Philly or like, you know, one of these teams that needed to win right now. But if you need somebody to build up a culture like this, this is the, this is the guy to do it. I mean, he's, he's one of the most well-liked people that I've ever heard people talk about in NBA circles. I've had the, you know, the pleasure to talk to him briefly when he was, uh, came through Dallas one time, just like the greatest guy will talk to you. Uh, we'll take time, talk about his faith, talk about, uh, you know, the team and all that. It's, he's just an incredible person to talk to a uh, hundred million dollars for a coach though. We got to see what money. the, you got to see what the incentives are, but is, is an NBA head coach worth a hundred million dollars over a six year deal? Well, I mean, it, I think about it's about where how bad your team realistically is, right? Like where the Pistons have been, you you don't have a lot of uh, smiles and sunshine. That, <laughs> their their that, win that column cool. started with the one. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. And it was like, not a hundred. There's it, it, it's not a lot of smiles and sunshine it's coming up in Detroit. So as bad as you are, you know, you got to go all in. You got to commit. And they said they they were willing to go all in for Monty Williams, and, and I, I respect him for following up with it. If it bites him in the butt, it bites you in the butt. But realistically, when you look at it, Monty Williams was the best coach available out there, and the Detroit Pistons just got him. That's a win for the city of Detroit to me. Absolutely, yeah. Th this is a great one. I'm looking at this team, uh, and I'm thinking they should take at least a step forward. I, I don't expect yeah. them to be in the play-in or anything next year, but I wouldn't be surprised if Cade Cunningham comes back and this team is just so – and then with Monty Williams now – uh, if you listen to Kuka Hill on Unlocked on Pistons at all, yeah. you know how much he was chagrined about uh, what Dwayne Casey was running and the way that he was uh, he running was that team. not a Casey guy. <laughs> not, not a fan. He was not a Casey guy. <laughs> not a fan of him as a coach. He's now in the front office, so I guess that's I guess that's fine now. But, uh, but I think this is going to be great. I think he'll have an episode up later today. Also, wanted to give a shout-out to Koo. He posted a GoFundMe about his – uh, about his wife who had, had brain surgery. The surgery is successful and all that, so we're praying for you and, and sending out good thoughts, and we've been talking to him. It seems like they're all doing well, uh, but love that the Lockdown family came around them. It was just really good to see different hosts send messages to him and do that. It's uh, Kuka Hill. If you go to uh, Lockdown Pistons and see him, uh, he should have an episode tonight. I'm excited to see yeah, that one. Show him some love, man. Show him some love. Coming up, though. Count it up. It's our favorite segment every week, Count It Up, where we count on the most interesting, fun, and this week, dumb things in the NBA. We'll talk about that with Josh Hart and his milk, Charles Barkley and his soap, 
<laughs> and more. You haven't heard this story. I'm like, I'm so excited to bring this oh, to you. Oh, I've heard I've heard the uh coming I've heard up. both, but we'll see. Coming up. Thanks everybody for hanging out with us on Locked in NBA, making us part of your day. Being part of the show, we appreciate you. Again, we have a five day a week show on your team. Go check it out. And now it's time to check out. Count it up, count it up, count it up, count it. We're starting here. Josh Hart. Just not playing. The Knicks are out of it. He's a free agent or can be a free agent. About to make a bunch of money. Might be a free agent now. Tweeted <laughs> in more ways than one. Yeah, tweeted hey. this. Have y'all ever tasted y'all significant other's breast milk? Asking for a friend. First of all, has anyone ever been actually asking for a friend? Because I don't think they ever have. No, no, no. Uh, you're, you're asking for yourself. De'Aaron Fox immediately responded, I'm actually not surprised you asked the question less than a month in. Yeah. So my question is, Pat, you have, you have at least one kid, right? So, you going to do this? Have you ever thought yeah. about it? Yeah, thought about it? Done it. I mean, they're there. Come on now. What do I look like? What are we talking about here? I have no problem stating this. Hey, wait, wait. He, every, said, he said they're there. They're every, <laughs> everybody, nah, come on. You need a little cream for the coffee in the morning. You got to do what you got to do, man. I mean, realistically, if we're talking about this. You know what I mean? Like, if you're a dad out there, shout out to all the dads out shout there. Shout out to the dads. Be honest in the comments. Let's stop with the cap. Be honest. Hey, here's the part. Here's the best part about the Josh Hart tweet. Nobody was sitting there like ostracizing him for bringing this up or clowning him. <laughs> everybody just kind of was like, "Hey, my boy, you supposed to keep that uh under wraps. You supposed to tell everybody you did that, dog. Like, you supposed to, you know, yeah, keep that on the down low. And you don't, you don't just throw it out there, but it's out there now. It's out there now. Dads, rep it proudly, man. That is love to the mother of your child." I can't get over what I said. Have you tried? He said, yeah, they're there, right? <laughs> I'm big on the, uh, what was that? What was that? The Jamie Foxx show? <laughs> Have some little kids run around the crib asking for the breast milk, but I get first dibs. I, I get, I get, I get. <laughs> if you've never seen that, go Google Jamie Foxx show wedding song. That is the first song that comes up. I want to know what Christ. was going on with Boo and the kid. <laughs> Uh, Charles Barkley this week also shared a story on uh, the Steam Room podcast with with uh, uh, Ernie Johnson. He said that he always carries his own bar of soap with him, a large bar of soap, because one time he was using the little hotel soap, and Charles is a big boy. One time he said, he, I almost had a little accident. And when he means an accident, he almost lost the little bar of soap in his yeah. butt. My question is, Count it up. has that ever crossed your mind or has that ever been a fear of yours in your life with hotel so, soap? There's, so there's two things here. One, no, there's not. Re- there's no, no, two, no, 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 no. There's two things here. First thing, did he restate this story? Because I swear I heard this story from him a month ago, which means he's bringing it up multiple they times. They brought it up. They br- yeah, th- yeah. This, the, he shared the story in the steam room a month ago, but he brought, oh, they brought it back God. up on, on Inside. Oh uh, my God! You gotta, you gotta relax here. <laughs> the second thing is, Chuck, my boy, come here. That solo cam. If we got that, I don't know if we got that or not. Get a rag, dog. What are we doing? Raw soap in the body out here, brother. Also, there's liquid soap out here. It's 2023. We don't got a bar soap this mug no more. We don't need individual cuts. No deer fat in the soap, my brother. Come on, you gotta get this. Th- you too big. To be and first off, are you raw soaping near the hole? Is that what the story <laughs> is basically? Is that what we talking about here? My God, Chuck, is that really what we're telling you raw soaping and then you putting it back? Like, do you do this at the crib too, dog? That's crazy. Whole family using this soap or is this personal soap? I have questions that I almost don't want the answer to. By the way, you guys covering Grady Dick tomorrow. Shout out to you. <laughs> There's a subreddit on Reddit called New Sen- Brand New Sentences where there, there people have said, like, this sentence has probably never been said before. And I can guarantee <laughs> you on Locked On, the sentence, are you raw, raw soaping near the hole? That's never been said on the Locked On show. <laughs> hey, before. listen, I'm just saying, man. <laughs> That's concerning. I'm just like, here's the thing. If Chuck lives with you and there's one bar of soap in the shower, you find out this story. What's the next conversation? First of all, you said I had two things. Oh my gosh. Uh, 
The NBA has opened an official <laughs> review into the, twi- into the Twitter activity unearthed this week with frequent mentions of veteran referee Eric Lewis. There is a refer- There's an account called Blair Cutliff. Yep, yep, yep. The NBA is officially invest- investigating this. Yes. Uh, first of all, Count it up. do you believe it's Eric Lewis on the account? Because it's very specifically every reply, this Twitter account, you can see a video of somebody like scrolling through all the tweets. Is it Eric Lewis? Because literally this account only replies to things about refereeing the games, Eric Lewis referees and about Eric Lewis specifically. Do you believe it's him? I think it goes even deeper to that. I'm pretty sure. Like I'm not, if I'm not mistaken on this, the birthday is the same as Eric Lewis. <laughs> the hometown that is listed on there is literally the same as Eric Lewis. And I'm pretty sure there's like some Celtics love on there. And Eric Lewis's family is like diehard Celtics. fans. <laughs> like they send out their Celtics full jersey body pajamas christmas cards every season <laughs> so which no yeah no uh no bias there my boy Not at all. but uh i mean i, I it's it's got to be bro because it has to be my favorite tweet of all of it is there's somebody that just replies to one of the eric lewis tweets and it just goes you just out here watching refs my boy <laughs> <laughs> that's the best part of it Doug. like nobody this is like who is this guy <laughs> By the way, five followers on that account. Nah, he's not. He's he's not in it for the. He's not in it for the the likes. He's not in it for the the, the engagement. He's in it to fight the good fight of Eric Lewis is a better ref than everybody thinks he is. He's uh, not, my that's, other question. The main problem. My other question is: Is this the weirdest Twitter Twitter NBA story since the the Seventy uh, Sixers burner account with the with the GM? <laughs> Is this the weirdest? I don't know, man. I mean, the breast milk thing is interesting. <laughs> that one was from an account um, that Josh Hart claims and is his. Yeah. Are we just saying the weirdest burner? I guess it could. Well, I mean, Kevin Durant's burner is wild. Oh, Kevin Durant's gosh. burner pops up way too often. He It pops up so often. There are accounts on Twitter called Kevin Durant's burner. account. <laughs> like it's got it. It's, it's got its own name in it. Yeah, um, I don't I don't know about that one. Last one, Duncan Robinson, who grew up in New England, was accidentally added to a massive group chat of Celtics fans from his high school after game six. Duncan Robinson was on JJ Reddick's podcast and talked about how his number was still the same from high school. And apparently he had some friends or people in high school that had his number. And they're all Celtics fans because he grew up in New England. And so he gets added to this big group after game six, and he missed those two shots late in game six. All these people are sending him like, you deserve that, blah, 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 go Celtics. Oh, he's getting, his phone is blowing up with it. Uh, my question is, Count it up. what do you do if your number is still out there and just getting passed around to Celtics fans, just getting passed back and forth? So that's tough. You automatically have to change it. But I'm also a person who hasn't changed my number since the fifth either. grade. Yeah. And legit, the day I got married, I got multiple text messages of, hey, this still Pat blocked, blocked. Like, you know, nope, not bringing up the past in here, Doug. <laughs> Speaking of the breast milk. But uh, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not, yeah, no, you got to, you got to instantly, I, that's probably too many people though. You probably got to change the number at that point, which sucks because I, I am, I've said this multiple times because of that situation. I want to change my phone number, but I don't want to learn another phone number. Yeah, like so, I, I yeah. think if I changed my number at this point, I'd become the old person that's always looking in their phone for their <laughs> phone number. It's like when you move to a new address, you're like, oh, I gotta learn this new address. <laughs> that that's not even as bad. The worst part about moving to an address is that day you're really tired from work and you drive to the old address. Oh, done that multiple times. That's a bad one. That, yeah. Or you just even just take the wrong highway, going the wrong way, and then realize yeah. it. Yeah, that's, that's a that bad one. Times. Uh, Duncan Robinson though got the last laugh. Game seven, he was able to do. He he got the he got the last laugh in there. Uh, great story by him on that. But uh, there you go. Go watch game one of the NBA Finals. Go listen to Locked On Heat, Locked On Nuggets. Great stuff from them. I think they have a crossover coming up tonight, guys. Thanks so much for listening to Locked On NBA. Bye bye. Boom.